In the last video, we covered the Start Engine platform review and overview. Now we're gonna do an in-depth demo and walk through and actually log in. So let's go and do that. So I'm gonna to go to startengine.com. And I already have an account, so I've already logged in. Uh, you would create an account, obviously. It's free to sign up. There's no downside to that. So this is basically the homepage for Start Engine. As you can see at the top here, they have a big link to invest in Start Engine. This gives investors access to that 10% owner's bonus, where they basically get 10% bonus shares on all the qualifying investments, as long as you've met the requirements of investing in Start Engine. So this is a Reg A Plus campaign to invest in Start Engine, the company itself. So as you can see, they've already raised $3.6 million from 3,200 investors. As a quick disclaimer, I have actually invested in Start Engine myself. Now, part of it is because I believe in the company and what they're doing, uh, but part of it is actually because of that 10% bonus. If you think about it, if I'm investing $10,000 a year on this platform regardless, and I get that 10% bonus, then I'm getting $1,000 essentially in free shares. So if I'm going to invest more than that, it basically would make sense for me to invest $1,000 in Start Engine anyway, because I'll actually be making more than that in free shares from these investments. Doesn't mean it's the sole reason that you should invest. Always, you need to assess the risk because you have the potential of losing all that money in that investment. Uh, but for my own case, in my own scenario, it made sense and so I did do that. But this is a typical offering page. We'll get back to that. Let's first, let's go back to the home page. Uh, now you can see it's basically just kind of a very similar feel to something like WeFunder. So these are the current offerings. You can see uh, any of the ones that are over a million are obviously Reg A plus campaigns because Reg CF or Reg crowdfunding is limited to that 1.07 million cap. Uh, but these ones are basically sorted by most momentum. These are some of the ones that are the most popular right now. It's very clean and look and feel. Uh, it's very easy to use. As we mentioned, here's some quick stats. So this is where you can see there's been over 100 million invested uh, in 300 companies and prospective investors. So again, Start Engine's definitely up there and they have some success stories at the bottom. So let's go back and take a look at an actual page. So if we go to Start Investing and this is gonna allow us to filter the investments, you can now see we can again filter by progress. This is, uh, we could look at completed campaigns. We'll look at ones that are currently in progress. Uh, you could sort by industry. So if you have a certain industry as an investor you're interested in, or if you're a startup founder who's looking to try and find some, not competition, but similar examples of companies in your industry that have raised, you can click on that and then it will filter it. Uh, in addition, you can also sort by recently launched, most funded and a couple different things. So this is pretty easy to navigate. Uh, I do wanna actually jump into a page here. So I'm just gonna choose this one. We popped up under consumer internet and then most funded. So let's look at Plant Snap Incorporated, which is a regulation crowdfunding raise. So they have a very nice layout and very easy to see what the key statistics are in your deal terms for Start Engine. Right here we can see they've already raised 267,000. Uh, there's been 375 investors. It tells you how many days are left. The valuation is nice and easy. This one is an equity offering of shares so you can see the price per share and the type of offering. You are going to see a lot more uh, equity, whereas on WeFunder, there's a lot more safes. Uh, Start Engine doesn't do as many safes, so you're going to see a lot more equity offerings of stock, either common or preferred. And then if there's a minimum investment amount, that's also specified here. So you can see this little star right here where this is where it's mentioning that this offering is eligible for the Start, own, start Engine owner's 10% bonus. Uh, so I just want to show how that actually works. So if I went to invest now in this company, just so we can give a quick walkthrough, You'll see everything on the checkout page is very easy to very easy to read. Um, so if I just said there's a 251 min, so let's say I was going to invest 252 dollars, uh, you'll notice that I didn't actually enter enough to get my start engine owner's bonus. So it said it's eligible, but uh, it's only 10%, right? And 10% of that would not be enough to get me my free shares. So if I invested thir uh, let's say 350 uh, 360 now you can see because uh, the $360, 10% of that would be a little over that share, it would give me 12 shares and it says that I qualify for the one bonus share. So that's where it shows basically if you're gonna get that start engine bonus, just make sure you read that because it doesn't, mess, doesn't mean it just automatically applies. Uh, when you're buying equity, you have to make sure that you're meeting kind of the minimum thresholds because you have to actually purchase 
whole value shares. You can't buy fractions of a share. In addition to that, you'll notice on this one, uh, so there's actually a 3.5% processing fee. Now, a lot of the investments on Start Engine in the past had no fee for investors, and a lot of that cost was actually passed on to the startups. Now I've started seeing more of a shift where there are more processing fees for investors as well. Uh, and I think the assumption there is that it won't be held against the startups on the back end, but that's just something to be aware of. That again is gonna vary deal by deal. Okay, let's actually go back and take a look at the page now. So again, this is gonna have a very similar look and feel. Uh, the campaign videos are always gonna be at the top. Uh, you can see there's again, kind of a quick nav that's gonna scroll you down. Whereas on WeFunder, this was broken into multiple pages. Uh, most of the start engine, it's just on one long page. So because of that, it's gonna scroll you to the relevant section. So if I wanted to jump to team, I could click team. If I click terms, it's gonna scroll me down to the terms. So it's very quick and easy, uh, pretty intuitive to find what you need, update, so anything from from the founders and then lastly as you know one of my favorite parts of each offering page are the comments where you get to see some of the questions that are being asked by other investors and also how the founders and the company is responding to those questions so that's one of my favorite sections to check out on every page in addition you can see you can follow or unfollow uh, just by clicking this little heart on any campaign and that will give you updates on them. Uh, so again, very similar look and feel. Also, you'll see again, bonus rewards with these campaigns. So that's kind of that Kickstarter model where if you invest 2,500, 5,000, et cetera, on and up, you get additional thresholds and levels of benefits uh, or perks. So this is an example page. Uh, in addition to that, so at the top, you know, it has your reasons to invest. It, it's very similar look and feel. So I'm not gonna go through everything. Just to quickly show you an example of a campaign that doesn't have a fee, uh, let's choose one of these. So we'll go to Thalia Brands. This is closing in six days, uh, but if 150 minimum investment, $3 price per share. So if I went to invest in this one, you'll notice at the top that it does not have that 3.5% processing fee. Uh, so because of that, for investors, it would be free to invest. Also, you'll notice if I just put in the minimum amount here, 150, because the price per share is cheaper relative to my amount investing and I get the 10% shares, I'll get five bonus shares. So that's the 10% bonus. Now let's take a look at the account page and when you have investments, what it actually looks like as an investor. Uh, so if you click on your name on the top right and you go to view my investments, this is gonna bring you to kind of your portfolio overview page of everything you've invested in on Start Engine. Uh, so you'll see summaries here for your regulation, crowdfunding and Reg A plus amounts. It basically gives a dollar value and then the number of companies. And then these are all the companies that you've invested in. So these are some of the example ones that says basically status incomplete that I was just clicking. So I'm gonna cancel all of these but then it actually has the companies you've invested in. And I really like this, that it shows you where it is in terms of the whole process. Uh, and then for the ones that are actually completed and invested, you'll see it actually turns green. It says funds invested here. So this is a good overview. You can download all your uh, documents that you need here. So your subscription agreement, and then also they have this nice ownership certificate. Um, I haven't printed these out or used them, but if you wanted to, you could see you get a nice certificate of ownership. Now, one of the other things that Start Engine just recently announced as of late 2019 is uh, basically an investment account or kind of a wallet. So as you can see here, I applied for this, but you would be able to link your bank account if you're interested in linking a bank account. Uh, it'll allow you to deposit funds, which will be able to allow you to invest in companies much quicker, but also any disbursements of companies that say return their money to you if you have a successful investment or anything will theoretically be deposited to this account in the future. And then in addition, once the secondary trading platform Start Engine Secondary launches, I think the thought is that you will be able to invest using your funds from this wallet. Uh, so it's basically kind of like a holding mini bank account on Start Engine to be able to allow you to invest and receive funds between your transactions that you make on this platform platform. Now, overall, we've showed a quick walkthrough of the Start Engine platform. It's very easy to navigate. Uh, it's a very clean design. It feels very modern, uh, especially compared to, you know, some of the other platforms that we won't be getting into as much, but some of the newer ones. So it's a very easy user experience. I will just also mention that they have a blog that you can't get to from the top navigation, but if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, something, a couple of the helpful resources. So Equity Crowdfunding 101, this basically will give you some resources to help you get started. It's really the basics that we cover at Crowdwise as well, but what is equity crowdfunding? How does it work? How much can they raise? You know, what are the difference between regulations? It's kind of just an FAQ page. Um, but in addition to that, you can click on the blog and 
the blog has some useful content as well. A lot of it is um, broken down for both for investors or for companies. So depending whether you're a startup or an investor, you can get some interesting tidbits of information from them here. In addition, they do something called the Start Engine Index, which basically gives the state of equity crowdfunding, how much money was raised last month, how much money has been raised year to date. This is something I actually look at monthly myself. It's a quick resource where they just compile all the industry data from both Start Engine, but all the different platforms. Forms. Uh, so you can see in September, it actually hasn't been published in a few months. But in September, the index was 244.7, which means that there was $244.7 million raised total. Uh, and in that month, they give the statistics, there was 12 million raised. This is just for reg crowdfunding. And it breaks it down by state as well as uh, by county, industry, and then basically what companies were some of the biggest drivers of that on Start Engine. Overall, again, Start Engine is one of the platforms that I personally use myself. It's number two right there behind WeFunder, but there are some other platforms that are catching up very fast. We're gonna be diving into one of those next, and that's Republic.